I visited Steve Yurick, an old friend of mine and re great repairman who owns Retrofret in Brooklyn, New York. It's loaded with every kind of guitar you can imagine from acoustic to electric and has a fine repair shop. And Steve started out by showing us how to use kitchen chemicals for repair work. There were some other tips in there too. Hi, I'm Steve Yurick, uh, Retrofret uh, Vintage Guitars here in the repair shop. And I'm gonna talk about food products today that we use uh, uh, to repair guitars. Um, something I've used for many years is uh, just your white vinegar. Get it at your local uh, Crasdale department store or anywhere else. Um, it basically stops chemical reactions. These days when we're doing more intricate uh, repairs, if there's a piece of wood uh, that we're going to um, splice into a guitar and we want to lighten it up to try to match tone uh, with a uh, stain or something like that. Um, we'll also bleach it so we can control it better, but again, it has to be neutralized, otherwise you end up with a mess after you've stained it. Another food preservative product, sodium uh, bisulfite, and um, this is, uh, I'll read this here, it says uh, it's good for vegetables and, um, and fruits, uh, and it's used uh, if you're a canner and you uh, like to can your vegetables and fruits, it's an antioxidant, so it makes it last longer. I'm sure a lot of you have seen um, pickles. <laughs> oh, come in! <laughs> so, uh, in terms of what we need to preserve in terms of uh, guitar repair, I'm sure a lot of you have seen celluloid nitrate pickguards that have gassed off or really oxidized in very volatile materials like movie film. Uh, it's very flammable, so you have to be careful how you handle it. Basically, is slowly burning away. In this case, we have a hole that is. Uh, develop there and will keep spreading, will keep oxidizing till you end up with a, a bag of dust, essentially. A lot of people will just try to fill it with some material, but if you're not going to stop the chemical oxidation process, then you're still going to have it kind of leaching out from that, that point and continue to deteriorate. So what we do is actually take, you know, just a regular two-part epoxy. Um, of course, we'll, you know, usually tint it with something, uh, very often an aniline or an earth tone. And we'll add um, a couple of pinches of sodium bisulfite to it. And that, in many, many cases, has helped to stop uh, the pickguard uh, deterioration from spreading. My, my real favorite trick, and I, I would like to give credit to uh, Joe Pecknick for many of these tricks. He was the uh, head technician at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for many years. I'm sure anyone who's done a next set who had a particularly gnarly uh, time with a glue joint where it, you know, it's a very uh, solid deep pocket uh, glue joint. When we steam it, we add meat tenderizer. Uh, meat tenderizer is an enzyme that breaks down protein and most glues uh, have some type of uh, protein uh, bond in them. Certainly any type of uh, high glue wood, rapid glue, uh, hot hide glue. If you mix that in your uh, water, uh, or water that you're going to use for steam, uh, it really takes the glue joint apart. I used to use alcohol on occasion for that, um, but uh, this really does the trick, and uh, we do have a barbecue on the roof. I should mention, since we're on film, that um, you can buy official retrofret meat tenderizer that will uh, tenderize your glue. It's only uh, $20 a bottle. We wanted to get in there before Stu Mac uh, scooped us on this, so operators will be standing by. Hi, I'm Harry Bowles here at Retrofret Guitars in New York. I just want to show you a couple things that I've been doing with this barrel clamp. First of all, I'm often not able to see what I'm doing once I'm inside a guitar. Uh, so I've marked one side of it with just two big dots of super glue, and that way when I drop it and it rolls around, which I inevitably do, I can pick it up and I know which way I'm turning it without looking, and that saves me a little bit of time. Then, after a long night of uh, reaching around inside an F hole guitar, I uh, came up with this, which is a wire, wire with a little handle on it, that just clips right on. It's stiff enough to clip on. I can just kind of squeeze it closed there. And uh, in that way, I can reach inside a sound hole or an F hole and get it right on there. And then, once I have it there, what I did was take one of these pencil sanders and just take the belt right off, old belt, flip it inside out, and used it as a drive belt here. So kind of fit that, fit that, not try not to look. It'll turn pretty well. I can get a huge amount of torque by just turning that 
and it'll I could just leave it alone and then not do it backwards to get it out the next day. Thanks, Harry. That's a good tip. Of course, I went home and tried it. But today we have a newer version, the new improved version, which instead of having a rubber sleeve has a knurled brass, which we find easier to grip with your fingers. With the sand belt, I wasn't quite able to get the grip that you could because you were working on rubber. But with a rubber binding band, I could do it just like you did. It works great. Thank you, Steve, and all your crew. Had a great day there at RetroFret and hope to come back next year.